Welcome to family time. We miss you. What else can I say? My goodness, I never realized how much I really need a lot of hugs from my church family. Yes, we miss you dearly. And we have had no idea that um, just being out of church and, and all this COVID-19 that's gone on, now we're all running around with masks on all the time. We had no idea that things were going to last quite this long, but the Lord is our strength. And I'm so thankful that you're making it important to stay connected as being a part of family time, being a part of your belong group. Sunday morning, online church. Yes, it's going to be awesome this Sunday as Pastor Harvey will be bringing an incredible word of the Lord to us. Tune in, put all distractions aside, and let's worship the Lord together. Also, Wednesday morning prayer, Pastor Chris has been off the charts, and I'm so thankful how the body of Christ sees the importance to come together for morning prayer. And so thank God we have all of these great avenues that we can actually stay connected even during the most devastating times. What a blessing. We're so glad that you are doing well. We pray for you every day. Bishop and I pray for our church family every day single day, that you would be well, that God is just blessing you and prospering you, even in the midst of what looks like a famine, that our people will be blessed, that no one will lose their lives through COVID-19 during this time. And we just thank the Lord that as of now, it's all good reports. So we love you and we thank God for you. And we're excited tonight. We have a special guest on our program tonight for family time, a friend of ours that we met. His name is Dr. Keith Johnson. And I believe you're going to be blessed tonight that you're going to learn more about why it's important to be successful and that God wants you to be successful. So I want you to come tonight with an open heart, with open ears, get a pen and paper and get ready to take notes because God has great things for you and for your life. This is Dr. Keith Johnson. He is uh, an internationally acclaimed confidence coach and speaker. And Dr. Johnson has had the honor of coaching more than 1 million leaders to elevate their levels of success, to be more, to do more, and to have more than they ever imagined. And I believe that's what you're seeking tonight, to do more, to be more, and to have more than you ever imagined. So I would like to introduce you to Dr. Keith. I personally met, my husband and I met Dr. Keith in uh, Orlando, Florida at a mutual friends church, Dr. Mark Sharona. I believe I was there speaking at a conference, a pastor's conference last year. And uh, it's just amazing how God orchestrates even who you sit around at conferences and, and how our steps really are ordered by the Lord. And we connected with this great gentleman and I know he's gonna be a blessing to, to you tonight. So Dr. Keith Johnson, welcome to City Church TV. We're so glad to have you tonight. Well, thank you, Pastor Tammy. Boy, and I'm going to tell you, wow, when I heard you speak at uh, Bishop Mark Sharona's, I'm like, now there is a phenomenal communicator. You did such an awesome job, and I just fell in love with you and your husband right away. And, and shout out to uh, Bishop Owen. Uh, I love you, buddy, and uh, I've been praying for his quick recovery and I'm just so proud of, of the progress he's made. I'm so proud of both of you just sticking in there uh, over these last few years. I know that there's been a lot of things that you guys have gone through, but I want to just let you know I'm so proud of the spirit of perseverance to keep on keeping on that you guys have. I'm, I'm so proud of you, and uh, I'm so grateful that uh, God brought us together. Yes, thank you so much. And it, it's, it's a mutual feeling, Dr. Keith. Um, would you tell our audience a little bit more about yourself, your family, and your ministry so we can learn a little bit more about you? Oh, okay. Well, yeah, uh, like you said, I, I live here in Tampa, Florida, and I'm married, and my daughter's here with us. And I travel the world speaking uh, over 200 days out of the year in churches and in businesses. And so uh, that's what I've been doing. And my life miss mission is just really clear. I empower leaders to succeed. And a lot of people today, they talk about influence, influence, influence. And, 
And I, I believe in influence, but if you want to get influence in the church, you get influence by being spiritual. So the person who can pray the best, sing the best, teach the best, you gain influence in the church by being spiritual. However, that's not how you gain influence in the world. In the world, you gain influence by one word. One word and one word only. It's not spiritual. It's success. Success is the word that gains you influence in the marketplace. So that's why I'm all about empowering kingdom leaders to succeed. And I believe success, Pastor Tammy, is our spiritual and moral obligation before God. And and because if, if we want influence, we've got to also be obsessed with not only being spiritual, but also becoming successful out in the marketplace. You know, a scripture I so often cling to and so often speak from is when the Bible says, I pray that you prosper above all things, even as your soul prospers. So what you're saying is biblical, of course, um, that God does want us to prosper and be successful and how important that is. You're right. God, nobody wants to follow someone that's just broken, and disgusted, and you're not an example for them to follow. That's what a leader is, is someone that others can look at your life and say, that's a life that I can follow. If you're married, that takes having a good, successful marriage. If you're um, a parent, it takes being a good parent and raising your child properly to also be successful. If you're, your finances, how you manage your finances, it doesn't, that means that you are showing success of how you steward what God has blessed you with. So yes, I completely agree with you and, and I can't wait to hear more from you. Dr. Keith, um with the church around the world, the message is always a positive message. And during this COVID-19 and with your contact with leaders and pastors in the United States and obviously around the world, how, in your opinion, do you think the church has been affected? Do you think it's been more negative or do you think it's been more positive? Because we can get a positive message in times of struggle. Oh, well, 100%. I believe without a shadow of a doubt that the church should be declaring the most positive message in the world. We're here to preach the good news. So our message should always be positive. Our message should be all, hey, you need to be a possibility thinker in negative times, right? And possibility thinkers, here's, here's what they do. They believe that no matter what's happening to them, that they can be more, they can do more, they can have more, and they can help more people. And so possibility thinkers give themselves permission to set bigger goals, from where they are right now to where they can go. So right now is a wonderful time as we face setbacks. You see, our setback is a setup for a comeback. And our comeback is never a go back. No, no, no. We're not, we're not going, I, oh, we want, we want to go back to normal. No, no, no. I, I, I want to come back, and my comeback is always going to be more. See, I believe I can be more. I believe... I can do more. And that's what I've been working on myself. Man, these last, boy, four months, I've been working on me. I've been, I've been working on me more than anything else right now. So I can be more. So then I can do more when I come out of this situation. And then when I do more, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to have more. And then when I have more, then I can start helping more. So many people in the church, they get so mixed up. They have great hearts great hearts. They want to help so many people, but they're four steps ahead of the game. Before you can help more, first you got to be more. So you got to work on yourself. And that's what I've been doing as a leader. And that's what I've been encouraging leaders all over the world. Use this time as a positive uh, experience 
to work on you more than you work on your church, more than you work on your ministry, more than you work on your business. It's time to become more so we can expand our capacity so we can do more for the kingdom of God. Dr. Keith, that's so good. Uh, you know, during these times of crisis, so many people have been distressed and, 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 and worried and, and, and scared. But as a leadership coach, what would you say to people tonight to encourage them in this time of uncertainty that we've been in? Oh, that's a, that's a great question, Pastor. I'll never forget, uh, it was March 16, 2002. My entire world completely fell apart. My wife and I, we lost everything, and we had to move in to my mother-in-law's 12 by 12 bedroom. And, 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 and by the way, my mother-in-law didn't like me too well. And, and uh, I, now I, be, I, be, I became her hero eventually, but at that time, she, she didn't like me too much. So I define that as hell on earth, right? There, life can't get any worse than living with a mother-in-law who doesn't like you, right? <laughs> it was it was it was tough but i remember being at the lowest point of my life and i i i i was at the breakfast note tears were coming down my face i was experiencing pain hey these are painful times and pain is simply an indicator to us that we um that there's more potential inside of us. That, that's what I always say. Pain is an indicator that there's more potential. I was experiencing the pain of my own unleashed potential. That's what I was crying about because I knew I was supposed to be more. I was supposed to be doing more. I knew God had a big plan for my life, traveling around the world, making a difference. I knew what God's word, you know, it promised me success. It promised me achievement. It promised me blessings, but nothing was going on. And I was experiencing that pain of knowing inside, man, there's something more God has, but how do I unleash it? And while I was experiencing that pain, I just looked up towards heaven and I said, God, what's stopping me? See, that's the question we should be asking ourselves. Not why, why has this happened? <laughs> No, no, no. The question of why comes from weak-minded people. You should be asking yourself not why has this happened to me. That's a victim question. A leadership question is what? God, what do you want to do in me? When I, when I looked up and said, God, what? Here's what he said. He said, Keith, you lack confidence. And I'm like, confidence? I thought I went crazy. I, I thought I was hearing demon spirits. <laughs> you know, I've never heard anybody talk about confidence. And, and God said, God said, Keith, yes, you lost your confidence. And I said, show me a scripture. And he took me to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. And it says, do not cast away your confidence because it will bring you a great reward. And here's what I want everybody listening. I want you to understand that confidence is in your hand. Confidence is in your hand. And the Bible says, don't let it go. Because watch, as long as you hold on to your confidence in the midst of all this turmoil, you're going to reap the reward. You're going to be more, do more, have more, achieve more, and be able to help more people. However, if you let it go, if you cast it away, the choice is not God's. The choice is not the devil's. The choice is yours. Are you going to hold on? Or are you going to let it go? Yet it's in the moment of decisions, our destiny is being shaped. And at that moment, I started realizing, wow, you, I lost my confidence. I, I like, God, I have confidence. I have all kinds of confidence in you. And God said, Keith, that's your problem. You have all kinds of confidence in me, but you stop believing in you. I'm like, whoa, whoa. And all of a sudden I realized that on my journey of life, somehow I got punched in the face so many times by life. Not by God. <laughs> you know, 
I, I like what Mike Tyson said. Mike Tyson said, everybody has a dream until life punches you in the face. And, and uh, he's a great theologian, by the way. That's a great theologian statement, I'll tell you. And, and I'm like, yeah. And you don't realize it, but you get hit so many times that little by little, you start losing your confidence. And I realized I lost mine, and I said, man, I, I got to get it back. And as I started to build back my confidence on the inside, that's when my world started changing on the outside. Well, you know what? We've believed always, Dr. Keith, as preachers, and we're excited to have this subject for the show tonight. And I know you're encouraging people. I can sense that in the spirit. But as long as we've been in the ministry, and it's 40 years for my wife and I, we've always believed this, that the Holy Spirit moves out of confidence. When you look at the great men of faith over the years, the A.A. Allens, the Arthur W. Pinks, many who have gone home to be with the Lord. Recently, we lost uh, Dr. Morris Cirillo, passed away just a few days ago. Uh, we worked with him in Africa with a crusade of more than two million people. And you just look at a man standing on a stage in the package that God presented to him, just earthen a vessel, but yet the confidence that the man had to speak the word of God. The Holy Spirit always moves through an attitude and spirit of confidence. So I know that you are encouraging so many that are listening tonight. And uh, in a sense, you're a mentor, you're a coach. Uh, you're a father, both in the natural and in the spirit. Tell us who you've looked up to over the years. If you were to look around your library at the moment, who are leadership people, whether they're still with us or if they've gone on to the kingdom of heaven? Who are people that over the decades that have shaped and molded your life? Well, uh, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. The first one, I, I started watching them when I first got Gave my life to Christ at uh, 24 years old. I didn't want anything to do with God because, uh, I, let me tell you, I, I was a good-looking guy. I was successful in the marketplace, and I was a hard worker. But I, I worked hard so I could party all night long. <laughs> I was John Travolta Jr., man, boogie-woogie in the bars. And... <laughs> and uh, and I called myself a professional sinner. I wasn't an amateur sinner. I was a professional sinner. These kids today crack me up. They smoke those little tiny marijuana joints. I'm like, come on, man. Back, back in the day, we smoked Big Berthas, man. We, 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 smoked, we smoked marijuana joints so big it made Cheech and Chong look like the Virgin Mary. I'm telling you, I was... <laughs> I was a good... I was a great sinner, man. I was a great sinner, and, but, but I looked at people in the church, and, and I labeled all Christians as, number one, you had to be a nerd. Number two, you had to be broke. And number three, you had to be lazy. So I'm a complete sinner, and I have all these Christians telling me, you need to give your life right with God. But I was the number one salesperson at the company that I worked with. And, and I'm looking at them going, well, I, don't, I don't need... Why do I need your God? You're like bottom on the list. I'm number one. But I went to church one day and I heard the message, the good news message, because I, I saw I, I, I met this woman and I saw her and I said, hey, baby, I, you want to go out with me? And she said, what do you want to do? I said, we go to the bars. We can dance a little bit. We can go to my apartment afterwards. And she's like, oh, no, 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 we're not we're not doing that. You can come to church with me. I'm like, church. Oh, man. You serious? But 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 when I heard when I, when I, I followed her to church because she, she I was just like wow that's an amazing lady I followed her to church heard the message for the first time God loved me God God could change my life God would forgive me of every single sin that I ever committed in my whole life and when I heard that message I raised my hand and when I raised my hand God came inside of me. And when God came inside of me, my friend, demons went out of me. And I was instantly delivered of alcohol, drugs, pornography, uh, the crazy lifestyle. I quit everything, bro. I, I, I was totally changed. And, and the next week, 
I turned on the TV. I said, I'm going to watch... I'm going to watch some church on Christian television. And it was CTN, by the way, right here, coming out of Tampa, Florida. I turned on my television, and guess who was on the TV? Dr. Frederick K.C. Price. And, and his message, was it was hilarious. I needed that message because he, he started talking about how, yeah, I drove my... Rolls Royce to church today. I'm like, what? I'm because like, my, my my mindset was like, man, if you're a Christian, you gotta be poor and wear flip flops like Jesus, you know. And I, I was like thinking, man, I experienced Christ, but now I'm doomed to poverty my whole life. And here's this guy telling me I didn't have to be poor, and I'm like, that's great. So the first five years, Doctor K. C. Price shaped my belief system, and I believe that God has allowed millions of dollars to pour through my hands today because I began with a right philosophy, not a poor philosophy, but I began, I began with a kingdom philosophy. And let's, let's, let's just talk where the rubber meets the road. If we want to have influence, we need more money to be able to do it. And uh, and that changed my life, and I've been on this road ever since. So he's definitely a big person in my life. And, of course, when I started to pastor a church, uh, I built a church larger than the city that I lived in. And, uh, and I looked at instantly to uh, John Maxwell. I knew I needed, not only did I need faith, I needed to learn how to lead. And the reason why my church wasn't growing, it wasn't because demons were stopping me. And it wasn't my wife's fault and the congregation's fault. It was me. I didn't know how to lead. I was hyper spiritual, but I didn't understand leadership concepts. That's good. Well, you know, you mentioned Dr. Maxwell and, of course, probably uh, one of the greatest influences in the world. We witnessed him. He came to visit us in South Africa. And it wasn't a Christian event, but it's a great testimony of God's influence. It was a leadership event. It was a coaching event. And here we were in the biggest building in the city called the Jesus Dome. So it was difficult to disguise it mm -hmm. as a neutral venue. It had this massive sign outside the Jesus Dome, and yeah. John was speaking for us for the day. And there was Muslims. Uh, yes, yeah, so South Africa has a strong Muslim population. Mm -hmm. There was the Jewish faith, Hindus, all dressed up in their religious outfits, but the common thread that drew people from all major religions of the world was wanting to be more. However, they could get across that threshold. And it was remarkable. And you may know this, uh, John's dad passed away just a couple of days ago. So uh, he, he honored his father his whole life as an incredible mentor in his life. And uh, it's great to, to hear that. And um, talk to us about books just before we begin to close today. If there's one or two books you would say to the audience tonight, this is a must read. Tell us about the book that's over your right shoulder. Mine. <laughs> I don't yes, tell us. I mean, after all, I'm the confidence coach, right? I don't, I, <laughs> I don't know of a better book, honestly. The whole subject of how God started to change my life. He said, Keith, you lack confidence to live the wealthy lifestyle. And I'm like, wow. And and wealth to me is more than being rich. Wealth is a higher calling. Rich, rich is just obtaining a lot of money. Wealth is a holistic point of view where you have wealth, you have spiritual wealth, you have mental health, you, you, you have um, yeah, spiritual, mental, physical, uh, professional, and financial, all six areas of your life are, are hitting on all cylinders. That's where you are a wealthy person, and that's the higher calling. So I wrote the book called Confidence for Living Wealthy, How to Unlock God's Unlimited Resources for Your Life. And it's, a, it's available on Amazon, or they could go to my website at keithjohnson.tv and pick that up. 
But I'll say something about Maxwell that touched me. I, I started following him early when I was 27 years old. He wasn't as well known back then. And uh, it's been a great mentor of mine. But what touched me about his father, and when John said this one day, he said, my father never paid me to take out the trash. He, he, said, he said, I went to my dad one day and said, dad, the other kids down the block, they get an allowance for taking out the trash. How come you don't pay me to take out the trash? And his dad said to him, he said, son, I'm not raising a trash collector. I'm raising a leader. I pay you to read books. And the more books you read, I'm going to keep paying you more. And, and that touched my life because early in my early 20s, that story touched my life because I was paid to be take out the trash. <laughs> and, and I thought to myself, where would I be? I even, even when John's dad's passing, I still, I still had that thought where I've done great things, but where would I be today if I had a father that paid me to read? Yes. Wow. That's a great, thank you for sharing that because now I don't feel so bad about not paying my four children <laughs> to take out the trash. <laughs> but thank you so much. Um, we're, we're, we're winding up and running out of time, but you have been such a blessing, Dr. Keith, and I thank you for everything that you imparted, and I strongly encourage you to get Dr. Keith's book and to learn more. I love what you shared about wealth. I love uh, what you talked about, and I believe, Dr. Keith, your motto and what you share, that it is God's will for God's people to elevate to success, to do more, to be more, and to have more than you ever imagined so you can be a success in the kingdom of God. Well, it's been a great night. And it sure is a blessing. And, and I just encourage you to seek God with all of your heart and to seek wisdom and information with all of your heart. Have a blessed and prosperous week. Thank you for tuning in to Family Time. You can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at City Church NOLA or visit our website at citychurchnola.com. Tune into our services via live stream on Sundays at 10 a.m. And you can also join us for morning prayer every Wednesday at 7 a.m. and family time every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Until next time, have a great week.